Hello and welcome to a discussion on the approaches accountants normally use to estimate bad debt expense. After viewing this video, you should be able to describe the three approaches accountants use to estimate bad debt expense. You should also be able to describe the sale of accounts receivable that are factored with recourse and without recourse. The sale is recorded in the period the goods are delivered to the customer. At this point, the company does not know who won't pay and who will pay. In a future period, one customer doesn't pay and there is bad debt expense. If the company waits to record the bad debt expense when the customer doesn't pay, the sale is reported in a different period than the related expense. This violates the matching principle. The company must estimate and report the bad debt expense in the period of the sale. Bad debt expense is estimated using historical customer payment patterns. The actual amount of bad debt expense is not known and must be estimated in the same period as the sale. When estimating the amount of uncollectible accounts, an accountant should consider customer payment patterns in the overall economic situation. Companies in their first year of business generally use the industry average. The amount of bad debt expense reported on the income statement is dependent on the judgment of the accountant. There are three approaches that accountants commonly use to estimate bad debt expense. The percent of sales approach is used primarily for internal monthly financial statements. This approach uses the past history of write-offs as a percent of sales to directly match bad debt expense to sales in a current period. The percent of total accounts receivable approach is used for external financial statements and is more concerned about reporting a reliable probable future economic benefit related to accounts receivable by estimating the balance that needs to be in the allowance account. The percent of accounts receivable using an aging report is similar to the percent of total accounts receivable. However, the length of time an account is past due is considered when determining the total that should be in the allowance account. The percent of sales approach is generally used at the end of each month because it is the quickest and easiest method to use and gives a fairly accurate estimate of only that month's earnings. This approach gives fairly accurate earnings for one period. However, it does not always give a good estimate of the allowance account and the total net accounts receivable because it does not consider the accuracy of prior period estimates. Because of this, it is most often used for internal financial statements. The percent of sales method estimates bad debt expense related only to current period sales. Current period sales are multiplied by the percent of sales historically not collected to get the estimated bad debt expense for only the current period. The calculated amount, the current period estimate, is added to the current balance in the allowance for uncollectible accounts. The percent of accounts receivable approach estimates the allowance account balance that gives the estimated probable future economic benefit of the accounts receivable. This approach uses the historical percent of accounts receivable that have not been collected in the past to estimate the amount that is not expected to be collected in the future. It is important to notice that this approach does not compute bad debt expense for one period. This approach calculates the ending balance in the allowance account to be used to report the probable future economic benefit of accounts receivable on the balance sheet. Bad debt expense is the difference in the current period allowance account and the ending balance in the allowance account. Let's take a look at an example using the percent of total accounts receivable approach. Customers owe the company $114,099. Historically, 2% of total accounts receivable is not collected. The beginning balance in the allowance account was $4,000 and write-offs during the period totaled $2,200. The T account for the allowance account begins with the beginning balance, which is also the prior year ending balance. Write-offs during the year decrease the account, leaving an unadjusted balance of $1,800 at the end of the period when the adjusting entry for bad debt expense must be made. 
The first step is to multiply the ending accounts receivable balance by the percent of accounts receivable not historically collected. This gives the total amount of the accounts receivable that is not expected to be collected, which is also the ending balance in the allowance account. The difference in the unadjusted balance, which is the amount left over from prior estimates, and the current estimate is the bad debt expense for this period. The percent of accounts receivable approach is similar to the percent of accounts receivable approach in that it estimates the total amount that is not expected to be collected. This method uses a report that details how long each unpaid invoice has been outstanding. The older the outstanding invoice, the higher the risk of not collecting from the customer. This approach generally gives the best estimate of amounts that will not be collected because it uses the most detailed current information. It is used by larger companies or companies with resources to devote to an aging schedule. Most companies use an aging report that shows the amount that is owed by customer in the days past due for each invoice. A summary aging looks some similar to this report. Amounts due are sorted according to how many days pass due. Then the accountant assigns a percent probability of not collecting to each category. The longer the account is past due, the higher the percent probability of non-collection. The percent is multiplied by the balance in each category to give the total estimate of the uncollectible amount. The estimate that will not be collected is the total that must be in the allowance account and reduces accounts receivable. Let's continue our example using the percent of accounts receivable aging approach. The total amount owed was previously analyzed by category. The beginning balance in the allowance account was $4,000 and write-offs during the period totaled $2,200. The T account for the allowance account begins with the beginning balance, which is also the prior year balance. Write-offs during the year decrease the account, leaving an unadjusted balance of $1,800 at the end of the period when the adjusting entry for bad debt expense must be made. The estimate of uncollectible accounts that was made considering the age of accounts is the ending balance in the allowance account and the total amount of the accounts receivable that is not expected to be collected. The difference in the unadjusted balance which is the amount left over from prior year estimates, and the current estimate is the bad debt expense for the period. Taking a closer look at the accounts and how long they have been outstanding gives a different estimate of accounts receivable and bad debt expense than looking at only accounts receivable in total. In most cases, looking closer at the details is assumed to provide a better estimate. Accounts receivable can be sold to others just like any other asset. Accounts receivables are generally sold by companies who need cash sooner than their customers will pay or who do not want to assume the risk of non-collectibles. There are two ways to sell accounts receivable, without recourse and with recourse. A sale without recourse removes all liability from the seller and the buyer assumes all responsibility for collecting the accounts receivable. The seller will receive less than 100% of the amount owed from customers because they are passing on the risk of collection. A sale with recourse means that the seller guarantees that the buyer will collect the receivable and the seller retains a liability for the amount that is not expected to be collected. A seller will receive more from the sale when they retain the liability for bad debt. Factoring accounts receivable is recorded as either a sale or a secured borrowing. Factoring is recorded as a sale and the accounts receivable is removed from the balance sheet when control is surrendered and each of the following occurs. The asset is isolated beyond the reach of the seller. The buyer has the right to pledge or factor the purchased accounts receivable or accounts will not return to the seller. If each of the above is not met, the accounts receivable continues to be reported on the balance sheet of the seller and a liability is recorded for the cash received net of the estimated collectible or the estimated uncollectible account.
After viewing this video, you should be able to describe the three approaches accountants use to estimate bad debt expense. And you should be able to generally describe the sale of accounts receivable, which is a factor with recourse or a factor without recourse. Please go to studymyaccounting.com and work through practices you learned for examples of accounting procedures followed to record each of the concepts discussed in this video. Then work the practice test. Please write out your answers and check your understanding to the answers provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.